All righty. Uh, welcome in, everyone. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Thanks for listening uh, or watching if you're on YouTube. Um, now, you're probably thinking this is not Jax Falcone, and it is not. This is uh, Michael Duncan, the normal producer. Um, but we're here today with a special episode of Undrafted. Uh, with me, I got Mark at Master June 70 and our special guest, Jaquan Hardy. How's it going, Jaquan? Man, I'm happy to be here. God is great, man. It's a perfect day. Can't complain. I'm, I'm great. I'm doing great. How about you guys? We're happy to have you here. How about you, Mark? I'm excited that we're, you know, three of us living in three different time zones and different places <laughs> of the world can just unite and, and discuss uh, a really exciting young prospect. So I'm excited. Yeah, so uh, so today, like I said, we have an interview with uh, Tiffin running back, number four, Jaquan Hardy. He's uh, just finishing up in college, and he's going to be heading into the NFL draft this year. And uh, we're going to talk to him about his life leading up to the draft, some time in college. Um, obviously, there's going to be some football-related questions, but also we want to get to know him as a guy, not just a football player. Um, and, you know, the long-term goal is we'd love to see him in the NFL and – um, he makes it really easy to root for him. So let's get to know him. Um, so Jaquan to start, can you tell us about your family and how they've handled your road to this point, you know, through college and leading up, especially this last year? Yeah. So, uh, my family, I, I love my family. First off, uh, my dad, my mom has always been there for me um, through every facet of my life. Even my brothers, uh, growing up, I, I looked up to my dad, obviously, and my brothers were always there for me. I have one sister. They were there as well. So we're all tight. We still talk with each other. We probably get on the phone like once a week. We're all we're all talking. Um, we're very family oriented. Uh, I love my family, like I said, uh, and they definitely helped me throughout every single facet of my life. Like I was saying, uh, even picking a college, they helped me, and just figuring out sort of where I want to be at in life. Definitely. Are you the oldest? Say it again. Are you the oldest? No, I'm actually the youngest. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Baby so Jaquan. How, so how did, um, how did that decision happen with college? Like you said that they helped you decide that. And I, I know I've heard in the past that you had, you didn't get any D one offers until track season, I believe. Yeah. So I guess kind of what went into that decision and how did they help with that? So basically I didn't want to go to a school where I would be another number because they understood that as well. They knew I could play. Um, but at the end of the day, if I go somewhere and if it's like I'm just there and I'm not playing, I'm just riding the bench, then I basically just wasted my whole career of doing something where I could have actually went somewhere and played. So basically my dad and my mother I talked to for them prior for like a good two to three months. And basically we talked about how I need to go somewhere where I can actually play, get my degree played for, uh, paid for, I should say and where I would actually have fun at. So, like you said, I had no Division One offers. I literally had two D1 walk-ons. Those were from uh, Ball State, and the other one was from uh, actually, was it Akron? I think it was, it was Akron. Yeah, it was Akron. So, two D1 walk-ons from Akron and Ball State. And don't get me wrong, the coaches there at the time, they were cool guys, but um, it wasn't a scholarship, so it really didn't um, – it really didn't set them apart from other schools. Now, going to a D2 school, the level was not as high, but at the end of the day, it's the same type of football. It's, there's really no difference at the end of the day to me. And I I just knew my degree was going to get paid for. So that ended up being the biggest decision I made. And now I'm here having fun still to this day. That's awesome, man. That's really cool. It sounds like you guys are all really close-knit. I mean, I remember – you know, when I was picking a college, obviously I did not have nearly as much to think about, but I did have a lot of those same conversations and it's cool that yeah. your parents were that invested in it. And not just as you as like a football player and stuff mm -hmm. like that, like, you know, they care like you do about your education. Right. Yeah. Now my mom's literally like a monkey on my back, always telling me, you need to get this done, you need to get that done. But uh, at the end of the day, she was right. Um, I picked a, a great school. <laughs> She's going to like that. Especially, yeah. At the end of the day, she was right. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's a good motto forever. Mom, moms know what's up. Mm, that's the, the truth. Out there. It's all true. Um, 
And so touching on something else, I guess, that you kind of that I've I've read about in different interviews, something that's actually really close to my heart is a lot of the work that you've done with um, special needs, um, both in school, out of school. And um, I did a lot of the same stuff in high school, and I thought that was really cool to hear you talk about. And I'd love to know, I guess, kind of where that came from. And also, is that something that you're planning to continue with <clears throat> after college? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, I ended up doing that in middle school. Now, I had uh, a, okay. a gym session towards the end of our uh, school day, I would just say, where we would have a whole period that would just focus on special during their gym class. And I just, I, when I would watch them, I would see them have so much fun, even though they have disabilities. And it's like, it made me really think about when people have bad moods, like, how can you even be like this? Because there are kids that are, blessed with less uh unfortunate things and it's like they're happy all the time and it's like i don't know how people can be in a bad mood when it's like you're blessed you're alive you don't have no disabilities man like like you should be happy all the time but um i definitely plan on doing things in that uh, sort of nature like i plan on having my own camp uh going back to my high school having my own camp and then I'm, I plan on having uh, my own camp for college as well, kids with special needs. And then if uh, if my high school wants to do that as well, I'm planning on doing that as well. That's incredible, man. Yeah. That's really that. cool. Uh, Mark, uh, you want to go with the next one? Yeah, sure. Uh, let's just say things don't work out in the NFL, mm -hmm. okay? You know, we're, we're positive people and we know it's going to work out. But let's hypothetically say that things don't work out in the NFL – and then you're put into a position where football is not no longer at the forefront of your life. Mm -hmm. um, what do you see yourself pursuing instead? Kind of like your backup can't contingency plan if if all doesn't turn out the way you want it in the NFL. Right. No, that's a good question. So uh, I ended up going to school and becoming a business major. So I, as a little kid, I always had a dream of owning my own business. Now. Really, I didn't really figure out what I wanted to do until I was a junior in college. And that was basically owning my own type of 24-7 uh, gym, my own restaurant if I wanted to, uh, owning my own smoothie shop. But basically just owning my own type of business because it's just, it's always been a dream of mine since I was a kid. So what when about you, when that? You, oh, sorry, oh. I was just going to say about, uh, you, you, got, you got me at food and restaurants. <laughs> so... Uh, the gym thing, yeah, okay, not so, not not so attractive to me. Um, but the oh, food, okay, so what, so, so what if you would open up a restaurant, person? yeah, what would yeah. be, what kind of food would you have at your restaurant? Oh, everything, really. I'm thinking like burgers, uh, ribs, steak, salmon, fillet, uh, perch, even fried foods, um, fries, obviously, um, BLTs, literally everything you could think of. I want to, I want to really mix it up. And speaking of the, uh, you said you didn't like the gym, so I'm, I might have to add some uh, food in my gym just to get guys like you in there. Man. Now that I like. Got to, man. I got to switch it up. I love being different, man. There Not you sure go. how effective it would be, but yes. I love it. It would definitely make me go to the gym. <laughs> See, what we're doing now is we're actually, we're actually yep. coming up with a new concept here, Jaquan. We're, we're, yep. we're coming up with the, the restaurant slash gym. It's a yep. new concept. Yep. There we go. Hey. It's possible. I think it. Christ. It's possible. <laughs> it is. Oh man, I love that. Uh, my dad would love the smoothie shop. By the way, he'll be your first yeah. customer. I don't oh, think he yeah. goes a day without a smoothie. I don't really know why, but um, <laughs> that's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, On a different note, if you know football or otherwise, what's a famous person that comes to mind that you really admire and why? It doesn't have to be a football player. Just, mm -hmm. just could be someone that that we'd all know that's famous that you really admire and you want to just tell us about? That's a great question. I would say Philip Lindsay because uh, coming out of college, he wasn't the biggest guy. He wasn't the biggest name and he was an underdog really. And I feel like he's one of the best backs in the league right now to this day. And I feel like he's paved the way for guys that are like undersized or overlooked. And he's a great person in general. Uh, speaking about Philip. Like I said, I'm training at Landau. I've actually got to pick his brain. I was so, going to say, he's up in Colorado, isn't he? Yeah, that's the crazy part. So, like, I, I literally watched him. I, I didn't watch him physically, but uh, I watched uh, his pro days on YouTube. 
I watched him go through his process of getting into the league. And it's crazy to see somebody like that in person because I was able to pick his brain. And he was just a great guy all around in general. And he's a guy I admire because, like I said, he's paved the way for guys that are underdogs, really. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Hey, yeah, his story is awesome. I mean, yeah. I, I kind of remember as it was happening, it was – you know, obviously, you know, I, I live out in Philly, but I remember reading about the dude from Colorado that's mm. kind of making noise at camp. And then they uh, they had just drafted, I think, Royce Freeman in like the third round. So everyone was kind of not tossing Phil Lindsay aside, but no one's really giving it a second thought. Obviously, it's going to be the third round back. And I mean, he made a name for himself. When you're that good cool and productive and overlooked, you get a chip on your shoulder. And that's the motivation that some people need. And Philip Lindsay is definitely that kind of player. I remember him coming out. And I think that's a great answer because, I mean, you being an underdog as well, right? Um, we're all here for you. And, you know, our goal is to get you um, noticed like Philip Lindsay was noticed and, you know, get your, get your name on the map. So I love the Philip Lindsay answer. So very happy with that. Yes, sir. That's awesome. I I didn't even thought about the Colorado connection. That's that's really cool. Small um, world, man. Small yeah, world. it is. Um. So one so one final question to kind of transition us a little more into football. So, mm -hmm. I was you know doing research, digging around online. And I found an interview with you from high school, and it looked like you wore number five mm -hmm. when in mm -hmm. college you wore number four. Is there any significance to either of those or the change or, um, I don't know. Is there any story behind it? So, like I said, I had uh, brothers in high school that was uh, playing football as well. So I wore number five so basically for my, my older brother because that's what he wore during his time in high school. And uh, I feel like it was like basically him passing down the torch to me once I wore number five in high school. But um, after that, um, I ended up going to college. I really didn't care what number I wore. I just wanted to get the opportunity to play, showcase gotcha. my abilities, and just go out there and have fun. So. High school, I wore number five for my brother, and once I got to college, uh, they gave me number four. I wasn't, I was mad or anything, but uh, I just, like I said, I just want to go out there and get the opportunity and just have fun. Yeah, you were uh, one of what thirty-two running backs at Tiffin your freshman year. I kid you not, thirty. I thought that was insane. Thirty-two. There was guys. I, I actually think we had a little bit. I want to say thirty-five, but three guys got moved to fullback and tight end fullback slash tight end position. Then we were at 32. And then, like, two or five guys quit. More guys moved to wide receiver, uh, fullback and tight end as well. But at the end of the day, it didn't phase me. I just needed to make sure that I took every rep like it was my last. And, like, I'm here today, and it's just it's yeah, just adversity I mean, at the end of the day. You just got to trust the process. I like it. Yeah. Um, uh, Mark, you want to go? Sure. Are you sure you didn't open up your, you know, fast food slash gym at that time and attracted 25 running backs and said, hey, check out that place over there? I promise. I promise. That's devious. <laughs> Anyways, well, I am the devil. So uh, what, what attracted you to become a running back of all positions? What attracted you to become a running back and, and not anything else? Like what? Was Why there didn't you switch to wide receiver, foot, fullback, yeah. quarterback, offensive line when there was yeah. 32 of you? <laughs> yeah. So, well, yeah, that, so, that's another, yeah, especially with the fact that there was 30, 32 of you. What made you stick to that, stick to your guns and say, you know what, I'm going to do this? Yeah. Uh, basically, just like growing up, I, I watched guys like LaDainian Thomason, guys like Ricky Williams, and it just – it inspired me really, and ever since then, I just I ran with it. But uh, the basically the position comes to me naturally. Uh, like in, I want to say in middle school where we had recess, uh, that's where it really showed me. Like that's where I stood out, and I was like, you know what, I'm actually pretty good at this position. I might want to actually stick to this position and see how great I am. But um, uh, like I, I just put my head down and just keep grinding every single day. Like the position comes to me naturally. I feel like I catch the ball very fluent. I feel like I run very fluent. I'm flexible, and I just try to have fun at the end of the day. So I, I try not to treat it like it's a job because if you treat it like it's a job, then it's going to become more stressful, and you might not have fun with it. So, Well, well I'm a middle school teacher, by the way. So yeah. I, can, I can concur that everything that you learn in life, you learn in middle school. 
So oh, it makes total yeah. sense to me. So and Mark yeah. also goes out and plays running back with the middle schoolers. He also thinks that he excels at yeah. running back against the middle schoolers. I am very uh, fluid. Very fluid. <laughs> you out there taking people's ankles and stuff. <laughs> he prefers to just run right through them. It's less work. Yes, I, I'm. Uh, I'm one of those violent w- runners, actually. Yeah, I'm a Chris Carson. The Chris Carson of uh, middle school. <laughs> Derrick Henry. Oh yes. man. I stiff, I stiff arm. You know, if you're on the field, anything can happen. Right. Yeah. As long as you're on the field, what stays on, what goes on the field, stays on the field. So. I know that's. And right. that's what you tell their parents when they come in for. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They come back cool. home cool. with a blue eye. <laughs> It's a different, it's a different approach, but uh, so far the the results have been quite good. So, yeah, definitely. Oh definitely. man. Yeah. Um, so a question about a different sport. Um, I saw that you had played some rugby. I guess in like middle school, high school. Does mm-hmm. that, Im- because I've seen the way you run it, it is very, I mean, vi- not I guess violent. Yeah. Um, does yeah, that? Yeah. Did, does your rugby experience impact the way that you choose to play football or the way that you are on the field? Uh, rugby is definitely – rugby has made me into the man who I am today, and it inspired me in many ways. It inspired me such as by not putting on pads and you're just throwing your body out there, you're just going out there having fun, getting it on. But um, it basically – it changed me in a way of being – being in more condition because you don't get a break in rugby. You tackle a guy and then you're right back up. There is no pause like, okay, what's the play now? Like football, but in rugby, you're you're straight you're straight into it. The only break you get is when somebody scores and that's about 15 seconds. And then the actual halftime, which is about 15 minutes, but you have to be conditioned in rugby. You have to know how to specific rugby. And it's just it's totally different in football, but it's made me into the man who I am today, and I'm proud that I actually played that sport and figured out how to how to learn it because it's not like you just go out there, toss the ball behind you. It's 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 not like that. There's more to it. There's way more to it. Just on a side note, did you know Jaquan? <clears throat> I played rugby at university. No way. I did. I know you're you're looking at the physique. Yeah. You're saying to yourself. <laughs> What yes, position did you like, play? That guy looks like a rugby player. Yeah, actually, and you're gonna laugh at what position I played. I yeah. played, I played back. So I was one of the really quote unquote fast guys. Yes, oh, that just wow. tells you how good our rugby team was. Yeah, I played at Trent <laughs> University in, in Canada. We never won a game, just to let you know. But <laughs> I, I can I can echo what you said. It's a yeah. very, it's quite a different game. I've I actually played football in in high school too. So mm-hmm. I've played both games. Totally different. It's nonstop, and like you said, it, it's 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 different. But because it continues, you don't get the stoppage, and you don't have the protection. So right. it's a totally different game. But um, yeah, I, I can concur. It's uh, both games are tough to play. Both are similar yet different. But I think you know the fact that you play both just kind of adds a little bit of a a certain element to your game. You know, like. It's a slightly different running style, but uh, mm-hmm. again, um, being able to play a couple sports, it really kind of enhances you as an athlete. Not saying that it's r- worked for me because it hasn't, but <clears throat> apart from me, um, you know, people that have played more than one sport, I think it's, it's just a good way to kind of build up your uh, sense of competition and your athleticism. I agree 100%. Definitely. That's awesome. I I'm sorry it didn't work out for you, Mark. I was I mean, gonna say it's awesome that you're finding so many cool things about me today. I'm just <laughs> I'm just dropping these things. I, you know, I'm, yeah, Jaquan's I'm, I'm actually right. he's here to interview dropping you. Dimes. That's right. That's right. We're trying to get we're trying to get NFL teams interested in Mark. <laughs> <laughs> he can stiff arm third graders. <laughs> yeah. No, hey, yeah. middle school. Oh, sorry, middle school, middle school, middle school. My bad. Sixth grader. Sixth grader. <laughs> Oh man. Um, all right. So another question of things I found on the internet. Do you actually carry around two tennis balls all the time? And where did that come from? It's actually three tennis balls, but uh two rarely, more three. So Jesus. I like I like learning things every single day, whether that's figuring out how to stretch, whether that's figuring out how to run a 40, whether that's 
whatever it is, like playing a video game. I don't care. I like learning things every single day. Now, I would say no mid-November, I had time to myself because we didn't have a season. So I was able to actually focus on a lot of things and what I wanted to do in my life. And juggling happened to be one of them. I've always wanted to figure out how to juggle. Okay. And I think it took me about actually like a week and a half to get comfortable doing it because it's not like you just toss one ball over to the other hand. There's a, a actual uh, a rhythm to it. You have to actually be invested in it. You can't just be out there just going through the motions. But um, I literally carry three balls in my actual backpack that uh, Landau gave us now. But um, I carry three tennis balls with me every single day. And it helps me just train on my hand-eye coordination and just basically slowing things down for me and just being aware of a lot of things. So ha ha have you noticed a difference in your ability to catch a football or just like, I guess, the the natural, I guess, lack of a thought process almost um, it, from yeah. the tennis balls? Yeah, because uh, there would be times where if a ball was thrown to me, I would actually have time to think to myself, like, like, oh, am I, am I going to catch this? Am I going to catch this? But now it's like, ever since I started playing with tennis balls, I don't. And it happens with, with I'm like, I'm not thinking. I'm just catching the football and I'm just running with it. So it's just, it's fun because it's actually, like I said, it took me like a week and a half to figure out how to juggle. So, like, I don't know why I didn't pick up on this sooner, but um, it, it made me realize where I, I don't have to think. I just have to react at the end of the day. and. That's way better than going on the field and thinking about what I need to do. Or like, oh, I might think, and the next thing you know, I'm, I'm not doing the right thing when I can react and do all the right things. Yeah, it seems like when it comes to, I guess, catching a football, you know, with all of my football experience, the last thing you'd want to be doing is thinking about it. Exactly. I mean, it feels like that's normally where, you know, people make mistakes. So with regards to... Uh, I'm sorry, sorry I lost you there for a second. What was that? Yeah. What was that? We're having trouble hearing you. Did you um did you change something with your phone or your mic or anything? Uh can you hear me now? There yes. we go. Uh I was I was saying it was a low ball. It was a it was a low blow. I said hit, hit me with blow. it. Hit me with it. I said you would know Nelson Angelor or uh, what's oh. the last name? Come on, man. Yeah, it was a low blow. Was, all right. Was, all right. It's all you know, jokes, man. It's the all Philly jokes. connection is just great. I love that. <laughs> it's, it's all jokes, baby. It's all hey, jokes. I'll hey, I'll tell you what. The Eagles could have used yeah. me at wide receiver these past couple seasons. Hey, the, the, definitely, the definitely, Eagles could have used Nelson Aguilar this past year. What are that, you talking about? You're not wrong. <laughs> he actually didn't do too bad this year. He, he, he did, did great. Did he was bad. the he did his top option. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah. He was great. I got a question about your juggling. Just – um. Like, I've never juggled before. Hard to believe because I've done so many th other things that you're finding out. But, um, <laughs> juggling has not been – might be on my bucket list, but it's not there yet. Um, what was the toughest thing to learn about juggling, and how could you relate that to football? Because to me, juggling is probably, obviously, a lot of skills involved because it's not easy. You mm -hmm. learned it, in the league, so that's pretty impressive. So how could you somehow take what you've learned from juggling and, and – you know, apply that to the game. It's a great question. I would my biggest word for that I would say is being patient and basically like going back to reacting skills because so for for juggling you will want the two balls you you want two balls in your your main hand. So my main hand I will have uh, two tennis balls, right? And in my opposite hand, which is my left hand, I'll have one ball. Now you're being patient when throwing the ball, and that's basically just like what football is because. There's times when you need to pull uh, a specific um, key out of your pocket, basically, and, and use it, really. And that's just like how juggling is. So juggling is definitely a great way to be patient, just like how football is. So if I can learn to juggle, mm -hmm. I can be in the NFL. Not necessarily, but it is right. a step. It's definitely one of the keys you will need. If that's yeah, the first think, step, then that's what I'm doing first tomorrow. Step, baby. I'll tell you, if you, can, if you can have three balls in your hands, though, you deserve to be in the NFL. Yeah. 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 Moving on from that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so in terms of patience, um, 
so uh, I've noticed in a couple other times that you've talked and also just from uh, watching your film, I mean, I know you consider yourself a home run threat and I think the numbers in the film would definitely agree with that. But how would you, I guess, balance being a home run threat, but also not wanting to take negative plays? Right. And that's a that's a great question, because um, it's unfortunate I wasn't able to show the opportunity this year because I, I really wanted to go off and have fun and show how I'm able to actually be coachable and stick on the routine. And even if I'm not able to get the, the greatest amount of yards, I'm able to just stick it up in there and, and get what I can get. But uh, really, at the end of the day, for me, uh, it is a balance, but I try to be as coachable as possible. Uh, I try to do what I'm told to do. Um, and once I get to the second or third level, I'm really just trying to play as smart as possible to, and just get basically get to the easiest route to the end zone or the easiest route to a first down and try not to overdo things. Like there were times where I would catch myself um, overdoing things uh, 2019, but I wasn't able to showcase that this year. Uh, so it's unfortunate, but it's a blessing in disguise at the same time. And it is what it is. Oh, there you are. Lost you for a second. You might want to that around. <laughs> gotcha. We're back. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so actually, uh, speaking of, um, I guess, kind of, you know, trying not to take negative plays, I know Mark had a question for you about um, a specific stat with uh, fumbles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can we uh, – let's just quickly look at your stats because they're pretty impressive. <laughs> So, like, you know, in your first season in 2016-17, uh, you played 11 games, only 90 rushes, but, uh, again, 576 yards for your rookie season. Then you broke out in 2017-18 with uh, over 1,000 yards. But one thing I did notice, and this is, you know, happens as a running back, right? You have your ups and downs. That year you had six fumbles. Mm -hmm. Now, conversely, two years later in your final year, you had the – roughly the same amount of carries, but you had one fumble. So my question to you is obviously the 2017-18 season, you had a little bit of difficulty holding onto the ball, but obviously two years later, that was not a problem anymore. Was there anything in particular that you worked on to alleviate that problem? Yeah, so that's a great question, actually. So my, my, uh, my last season, uh, as a tip and drag, and my head coach would preach CPW. So CPW stands for cover the point, pin the elbow, and wrist up. Now, he would preach this every single day, and I mean every single day, to where it was annoying, but it was, it was like one of the biggest keys to actually get you on the field. Now, outside of football, I would – always have a ball me and I would appreciate that in my head. I was always covering the point well, pin my elbow with the wrist up. Now, I had another specific ball. It was a black ball that had uh, somewhat of a bungee cord to it. I would connect it to a, a doorknob or uh, I would stick it inside of a door. And I would always basically work on CPW while I'm, uh, while I'm just sitting there at home if I'm not busy. I would literally just – I work on it. Like, at the end of the day, you can always uh, – you can do things – during football, but if you're really like taking your time outside of football, you're actually going to learn it more often. And I feel like that's what really made me thrive of basically ball security. And that really helped me. It really did. It sounds like you, you were doing your best kind of like with the tennis balls where you were just trying to get away from having to think about it. You know, if you Literally. are doing that stuff so constantly, it becomes, you know, you're not going to hold a ball with yeah. the CPW, which yeah. I, I guess it clearly worked. I mean, <laughs> It did, it did, and it, it like I got, I got to a point where I was actually comfortable holding the ball like that and sprinting with it. So it, it didn't bother me after a while. But um, like you said, just the more you do it, the the easier it'll be, and you'll just react and not have to think about it. Yeah, I mean, especially at the next level. I mean, you you have no clue how many opportunities you're gonna get, and you see young running yeah. backs in the NFL all the time. You know, they they go out there, they're nervous, and maybe a fumble will end their whole day running the ball yeah. because you can't you need to make the most of those opportunities and if that's one less thing you got to worry about then that's awesome i agree i agree 100 percent. speaking of opportunity let's go back in time let's go back in history 
what was the greatest moment as a running back running at Tiffin? What was the, the best game or the best maybe series or the best play that you remember that you, you look back on with a lot of fondness and great memories? That's a great question. Uh, so my last collegiate level uh, football game, I would say, was Finley. And Finley, we haven't beaten Finley for 26 years. So that game was very personal for me. Uh, <laughs> very personal. But um, other than that, uh, we beat those guys. I think the score was like 52 to 45. Um, nice. We actually got an amazing conference ring out of that game as well. But um, I would say my favorite play – was also in that game as well. I had a counter play and I think the the inside gap was eight and up and by the DN. He squeezed down. So I ended up actually he he bit down on a on a on an inside play. So I bounced out. I broke around five to six tackles and I dove for the end zone. And it it was all a blur during the actual play. But when I go back and when I look at the actual play, it's crazy because it's, it was just me reacting. And I, I didn't think whatsoever of it. And it was just – I was like, wow, I actually did that. That's crazy. That was that was fun. But let's do it again. But uh, that was my favorite play, my favorite game. We didn't beat them, like I said, for 26 years when we finally beat them. So we made history. We got an awesome conference ring out of that. And it was it was personal for me, definitely. And I guess so that ended up – being your final game at Tiffin, it was so actually the game after that was my final game. So, that oh, you game, had one more, okay, right? So, that game was gonna decide whether we were gonna go into the playoffs or not. So, we actually won that game, got a conference ring, and we got right into the playoffs. It was awesome, awesome. I like the way you uh, you kind of described it like it was a blur, mm -hmm. but at the same time, when you're describing the play to us, you're recalling it with so much clarity. Yes. And so much precision um, kind of makes me ask this question. You know, when you're out there, you seem to be like when you describe that last play, you're like you are mentally focused and you are watching and wa seeing what every player on the defense that's kind of in contact or would be in contact with you, what they're doing, how they're going to the left or the right. How much of that are you doing thinking and how much do you think is – you're just going for it. It's just like, like the reaction time has got to be so quick. How would you describe to a non-running back, um, like most of us are non-running backs? How most would you of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two even of the three of us. Even in high school, I, I played football, but I was definitely not a running back, hard to believe. But how would you describe to somebody that it, isn't so. a running back? Because the thing that I'm kind of interested in, it just as a you know a viewer or or analysis, just looking at what goes into the mind of a running back is how much of it is that you are going, well, he's moving there. He's moving there. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. I'm thinking about it. It's mental. Whereas boom, I'm just like, boom, 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 boom. And like, right. how would you describe the difference between the two, you know, reactions? So I feel like at the end of the day, you want to treat it as art. Now, what I mean by that is you basically fall in love with it and, at the end of the day, you have your objectives. You know what to do, so you have to be coachable. Now, if all goes to hell, you need to make sure you have a backup plan. So say if uh, both of the A-gaps are aiding up, you do have an obligation to bounce to B. Now, if uh, if B is aiding up as well, do you need to have another obligation and, and get the heck out of there and go score or go get a first down, whatever you need to do. But um, just by going over practice reps, when you're going over your practice reps, treat them like game reps. And I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when you get to game time, it's it's going to be simple because you're, you've already been there. If you're already in the middle of practice, seeing the guys out there, you're taking mental reps, you're like, okay, this is going to happen, so I need to do this. And now if that happens, then I'm obligated to have this type of situation. And you just always got to be prepared, really. That's all it is. So that way, when you get there, you don't have to think about it. Exactly. Go back to reacting again. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I like, I like that. That's a great answer. That's a great answer. It's kind of like a, uh, 
Malcolm Gladwell's outliers where he basically says, if you practice and practice That's... and practice and practice and practice, eventually, you know, you're, 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 because I, I think there's a, for, for some of us that don't play football, we, we just, we look at practice as practice. We don't, we're not interested in practice, but you're telling us that practice is so important because it really sets you up for the game where you, you and like your CPW, I mean, mm -hmm. these are all examples to me that, um, getting things driven into you to the point where it might be ad nauseum, but when it comes down to the game, those things come second nature to you. So I just think it's really fascinating that, you know, literally the term drill is drilling it into you mm -hmm. to the point where you are ready to just be instinctive. I love it. Love that. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm all about the small things. A lot of small things will eventually carry on to bigger things, but once you get the small things down, life will be way much easier. Agreed. Um, all right. So before we get into, I guess, um, your path to the draft mm -hmm. to steal, I'm pretty sure that's a TV show on NFL Network. But um, uh, two quick fire questions about NFL players. Yes, sir. So first one, what player was your favorite growing up and which current running back in the NFL do you think reminds you of your style of play? That's a great question. Uh so right now I'll say um, one of my favorite players growing up was probably Ricky Williams. Uh, okay. He was a great guy. Um, he he just stood out to me the way his build was, his body composition, and the way he ran the ball. He was just mean with it, man. It was yeah. just, he's out there having fun. And I was like, you know what? I hope I play football like this guy at the end of the day. But um, for me, I would say my current favorite uh, favorite NFL players. I feel like I remind myself of. Uh, I try to be me at the end of the day, but if I yeah. was to pick one, or a couple, I would say I would say I remind myself of a little bit of Todd Gurley. Okay. And hmm, I would say I mm, it may be Saquon. Because I, I hurdle when the time is right. I don't try to hurdle every single guy. I hurdle when the time is right. And there are times where you gotta we gotta uh, break out in open space. Once you get in open space, it's, it's a sprint to the end zone. It's gotta be game over. Wins. All right. And second one, if you could take handoffs and passes from any quarterback current <clears throat> or past in the NFL, who would it be? Ooh. I got to go to him, man. He's the GOAT. Tom yeah. Brady. Yeah. He's the GOAT. He's Makes the goat. sense. <laughs> I didn't wear that shirt today. I knew I should have worn that shirt. Oh. <laughs> He's the best, man. He He's is. It's undeniable now. If best. it wasn't already, which it was. <laughs> um, all right. So getting into the draft a little bit. Obviously, this last year has been bizarre for tons of reasons. But for you specifically, I'm... I imagine that this was probably the first fall in a very long time that you haven't been playing competitive football, at least when healthy. What right. has the last year looked like for you when you would have been playing football? That's a great question. Um, like, like I had a lot of time on my hands. Basically, I would say being patient, staying ready was the biggest, my biggest uh, asset, I would say. And that's physically and mentally because – my coach would always tell me, we're going to have a season. We're going to have a season. Then it just it got to a point where it was like, yeah, I don't know if this is going to if this is gonna actually happen. But basically just staying physically and mentally ready was one of the biggest things for me because if you're not mentally ready, you're not going to be physically ready. And if, you're not, if you don't have both of those assets, then you're just a liability at the end of the day. That's fair. Yeah. Wow. Um. So obviously you've spent a lot of this time. I'm, I'm assuming. I mean, I know you're um, you're at uh, the camp now. Um, mm -hmm. So you've been preparing for the NFL draft. Um, has anyone, I guess, any of your trainers, uh, have they been telling you that you should be gaining or cutting weight? And I know earlier you were even telling us about like a nutrition and a workout plan. What do those look like? So that's a great question. So I actually came in at Landau. I went in at 216, if not 217. Um, after that, they wanted me to cut, I would say, six pounds, get me to 210. I'm actually 210 right now, literally. But uh, my actual um, 
specific diet, it looks like more of specific meats, such as fish at times. Uh, I'll eat salmon sometimes. I'll eat uh, some steak, but every single meal is about 500 calories. I'm drinking body armor every single day. I'm drinking a specific amount of water as well because they want me to be hydrated. And a lot of things matter, like such as sleep. Uh, sleep was the biggest thing for me as well. They want us to get in the. They want us getting eight to nine hours of sleep a day. Uh, they got me eating fruits such as kiwis, uh, bananas, strawberries, uh, blueberries, a lot of good things. Um, and vegetables as well was also a big thing Ugh. for me as well. So everything is really planned out for you. I mean, they really, they tell you exactly what you got to be doing. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> There's Mark with the, the Chinese it's Doritos. Dorito man. But, uh, Just to prove that I'm in China, everybody, and that um, he's, this is actually, the Chinese have convinced me that this is actually made out of vegetables so yeah. we're on the same planet man we're on the same planet. <laughs> all good yeah, just about just about oh, okay man. i got a question about your workouts or your typical day so you know i'm, I'm assuming you're training are you training seven days a week that's that's probably too much I, again i you, you can enlighten me on this but um how many times do you train a week and how many hours or how many times a day within that day do you train mm -hmm. So we train four times out of the week, and we have three recovery days. Now, one of them is technically an off day, but two other days we go in, we stretch, uh, we get a – not necessarily a massage, but for me, we work on my hips. So they'll do uh, deep massage tissues to make sure my hips are correct, make sure my hips are aligned. Um, we work out. So our first workout is usually – an hour and a half. Now that's our speed training and our actual lift is usually an hour. So we're training from two hours and 45 minutes to three hours, just about every single day besides those three recovery days, because the recovery day only lasts for an hour. Like I said, we're going in stretching, we're getting a deep uh, massage tissue and we're basically just going in. Um, we'll do, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Normatec boots. We'll do the Normatec boots. And if we want to go over to another uh, recovery station, we'll go into the hot tubs and cold tubs. And we'll do, uh, we'll do our fire cups if we need it. And sometimes acupuncture. No hot tubs I've done. That's it. Yeah. I've never done any of the rest of that. The cold tub. It's got to do it. <laughs> You got no matter how much you hate. You, you don't do sound it. too excited about it. You gotta do it. Uh, so, <clears throat> so the the method to their madness is we'll do hot tub, cold tub, hot tub, cold tub. Now you can do that two or three times, but you always have to end on the hot tub to keep your uh, muscles relaxed and basically ready after the cold tub. Crazy. So you would say that the cold tub is uh cold. It's basically frowned upon if you end on the cold tub, literally. <laughs> so, that's, that's when you know you've not done well. You've had a bad practice here in the doghouse. To you, in the cold tub. <laughs> that's they, they where Mark sends the middle schoolers too. that try and break his tackles. I, I yeah. end up in the cold tub all the time. Just, 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 just letting you know. That's funny. Man. So... Um, Mark also mentioned that you have had some conversations with, I, I believe, some NFL maybe <clears throat> not teams exactly. I'm not really sure. I, I don't know how this process works. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've never really been recruited for the NFL, not yet anyway. Um, but so have you talked to them and had, like, what have you guys talked about, I guess? That's a great question. So uh, my showcase I went to, which was in Texas. I actually got to talk with 23 scouts and they were all from different teams. So I got to talk with 23 teams. I actually got to talk to one of the national scouting combine guys. His name was John Peterson. Great guy. Uh, I had a great conversation with him. And basically they were just talking about who I am as a person and who I am as a football player, but they were more concerned who I am as a, as an actual person because actions speak louder at the end of the day and you can say uh you can say all you want but body language is what stood out the most for them guys and some of the drills that they made us go through were uh catching catching uh catching the ball drills going over bag drills basically they 
incorporated some combine drills into our showcase. And one of the biggest drills that stood out the most, I would say out there in Texas, was the Deuce Staley drill. It was. A I was going to ask drill. about that. Sorry, I got really pumped. He, no, he's a like, Philly guy. He's a Philly I guy. I love that drill. I really oh, love man. that drill. I feel very <clears throat> fluent in it as well. Um, so I can't wait to go out there. Uh, my pro day is on March 22nd. So I'm going to go out there, crush it. It's at Toledo. Go out there, have fun. I, I hope we do that drill. If we don't do that Dude. drill, I'll be kind of disappointed. But if not, it's not the end of the day. Because I've been training so long on that drill. And I'm actually fluent in it. So I want to say that that's something that e either Deuce kind of came up with himself or it's yeah. something that he really popularized. And I remember watching the combine last year, the year before, and that's when they like officially named it the Deuce drill. And he's out there with the guys, you know, I mean, he's, he's just, he's such a popular coach. He's such a popular yes. players coach. And I mean, we, we here in Philly love him. Obviously he, uh, he actually just left for Detroit, um, yeah. which we're torn up about, but um, uh, I, I was, I was wait. I was hoping you'd get there. That that's awesome. I love that. Even yeah. you, like you called it the deuce drill. Yeah, I, actually, I love I, that. Like I said, I really do love that drill. Like it, it's it looks like an awkward drill, but it's awkward <laughs> for a reason. They want to see how how fluent your body is going through these bags. Literally, that's that's awesome. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, thanks for making him feel good about Philadelphia too. I mean, that was really nice of you. I mean, after. After the Nelson Aguilar thing, I think yeah, it's, it's I all about that. it's all about balance, right? It's all about balance. <sighs> oh man! Yeah, whatever, Mark. All right. Um, you want to uh, ask him your uh, your fantasy related question, Mark? Are we at the fantasy ones now? Uh oh, no, actually, I did have one more thing. Um, so when you were talking <laughs> with those NFL teams, does it ever come up? I guess the fact that you were D2 and maybe do they ever have questions about the, the jump in competition from the D2 all the way to the NFL as opposed to D1 to the NFL? That's a great question. But uh, I would say only one scout said that, and I think it was the Raiders scout. And now what I told him was at the end of the day, my film speaks for itself, like especially at my position. I'm going to yep. be doing this to the guys, whether they're at D1, D2, or D3. It doesn't matter to me. But um, Middle school. I was also telling them how there's guys before me from small schools that's been very successful in the league. So it doesn't really phase me. You don't have to take a chance on me. Somebody else will. You're going to miss out, man. That's all I'm going to say. And he was, he was stunned at first. He was like, you know what? I like where you're coming from. That makes sense. And that and it really caught him off guard because I was, I was coming with the facts, man. I'm all about facts, really. Can't get mad at the facts. I love that attitude, man. That's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I mean, because at the end of the day, you're right. You know, if he doesn't take a chance on you, someone will. And yeah, I mean, you you said it earlier, Tom Brady. I mean, every <laughs> team in the NFL had a chance to draft him about five or six times. Pick, so yeah, he came in six round. Now, now look at him, crazy. Pick number one ninety nine. It's it's wild. Exactly. Um, I got one more yeah. question. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> about your uh your weight mm -hmm. you're saying that when you came in you were at 217 pounds right and that now you they, they said basically slimmed down to 210 <clears throat> excuse me um a couple questions from that just mm -hmm. this is very fascinating to me when you're 217 pounds versus what you are now 210 it's seven pounds now to someone like me that's that doesn't feel like a lot okay um, do you feel as just as a runner, as a, as a, as a person just moving around, do you feel that that seven pounds is significant or is it just seven pounds? That's a great question. I would say in between. Now, the reason why I say that is because I, I slimmed down just a little bit just to run even more faster than I was before. Now, now when I first got here, I was running uh, around a four, five, eight, 40. Now I'm down to like a four five flat, and I'm looking to get like a four four eight four four seven in the forty. Now, like I said, they want me at two ten, and I still have a lot of things to do. Like the forty might sound easy, but there's a lot of smaller techniques that can really decrease your actual time. Yeah. Um, but really, I would say, I would say I feel I feel pretty good at around two fifteen, but uh. It was it was simple, way easy to cut off. Um, it, I would say it was just seven pounds, really. Yeah. Okay. 
It's yeah. just curious. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So on, on to fantasy. Um, many of us. Because we are, we are a fantasy podcast <laughs> after. Yeah. We, are, we, are, we are. We're not going to hide behind, you know, our beautiful masks here. But uh, many of us analytics folk. Uh, look at so many variables like speed, burst of agility, amount of production, size, BMI, blah, blah, blah. You'll hear it all in our, our neck of the woods. Um, which out of all of these is the most important to you as a player? Like, are you are you going towards your pro day with like, man, I gotta nail that speed. If I get if I get a four, if I get a four, four, five, then I don't care what I jump or anything, <laughs> you know, like is, is speed the most important to you or is, is one of these other metrics, athletic metrics more important to you? Um, that's a great question. Uh, really everything is important to me. Like I, I, I want to jump over 10 feet in bra. I want to jump a 38 in the vertical. I want to, I want to run a four flat in the agility shuttle. I want to run a four, four in the 40. Like I want to do everything great. I don't want to just focus on one specific drill because then it'll eventually just, I feel like I won't, I just, I'm not that type of guy. I, I need to be great in every asset and everything I do. I don't want to just focus on one specific type of drill. If that makes sense. It totally makes sense. Which of those do you think come most naturally to you? Is it I, the on the field stuff or is it the workout stuff? Oh, uh, that's a great question. I feel like both. And now the only reason why I would say both is because I'm comfortable with everything. The only thing I could be a little bit more comfortable with is probably the 40 because I can get out faster. But it's just about keeping that top end speed throughout the whole process. Um, the the actual field drills come to me easily. The one of the, the biggest drills that come to me even more uh, more nice and more easily, you could say, is the agility shuttle. Uh, when I first ran it, I ran a 4-2 as our baseline test. But like I said, I want to get a 4 flat, not like a 3-9, something out of this range, really. Awesome. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so last thing before we get into kind of some, uh, some quick hitters. Um, Let's do it. Have you ever played fantasy football? So in high school, I had a lot of guys try to tell me to join their fantasy, this and that. Like, bro, we'll put like five dollars down. Whoever wins, get the pot. But um, I I never really got into it. I I, I don't know. I, I I don't know if I will this year or next year. But uh, I don't know. Who knows? Only God knows. But this year that we're having, like, who knows? You do it if you're able to draft yourself first overall. Oh, uh, like wouldn't that be a pretty decent, you know, reason to get into it where you can just sit down and say, Hey guys, I'm on my own fantasy team. I personally, <laughs> that would be my reason for getting to the NFL. That would mean I made it. Right. No, I'm 100% with you. I, I think, I mean, that's why I got, that's why I would get mad in though, isn't it? But, um, <laughs> hey, fair point. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I, I would say, yeah, I would draft myself first. I would be very disappointed if somebody took Tom before me. But uh, I'm I'm going for me first, man, because it's, it's something. Fair enough. Uh, you'll have to join one of my leagues next year. We can play together. <laughs> I'll keep and, you posted. Uh, I'll keep you posted. Yeah, I mean, it, I can't guarantee you're going to get yourself. I might take yeah. you first, but we'll see. <laughs> um uh, Mark, you want to hit him with the the uh, quick hitters or the quick hitters? I, I I would just have to say that let's start a league and let's let's co-manage with Jaquan. I mean, we can be, we will draft you first. Yep. Draft Tom second because you know he's handing off to you and everything. It's all <laughs> it's all been determined. I mean, it's yeah. so good how we can sit around, have a few questions, few laughs, learn a few things about you, but really solve your problems. You know, you're going to go first. <laughs> No, we started off with this whole thing that we wanted to get you drafted. Yeah. But now we're not gonna stop there. You're gonna get, <laughs> you're going, going first. up. You're going up. We're going you know, up, baby. Oh, I just wanted to make a comment before the quick hitters. From what I gather, I'm no psychologist, but like just listening to you, you're you're a guy that just wants to be good at everything. Like when when I asked you about the uh, which which drill is most important to you or whatever, 
you you're this kind of guy and just talking with you on on wanting to do so many different things learning juggling during covid the whole kind of nine yards you just paid this idea like this is a guy that just wants you want to you want to try everything you want to be good at everything and i think that those are really good qualities for a person to become successful is when they're interested in so many different things they want to excel at different things and i think it's good that you're not just pigeon holding yourself into one area you're actually like opening up your eyes to everything so i just want to say that it's very commending the way you kind of approach life and football so before mm -hmm. i hit you with all these heavy hitters <laughs> appreciate okay, you ready? yes sir okay, Let's do these, it. These, these ones jaquanda has no idea what i'm gonna ask so but he's he's ready there, he's i'm gonna ask it. 10 questions one word or short word answers no don't expand on anything it's you know brevity is wit here and it's just kind of like getting you know the viewers and the listeners something a little bit extra on top to get to know you a little bit better before you know we draft you as your number as our number one player so uh, <laughs> question number one um name me the country you would like to visit the most germany germany okay number two if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Mm, mind reader. Ooh. Number three, who do you think is the most overrated actor? About to ruffle some feathers. It's that one yeah. guy. Who was it? <laughs> oh, he knows. Name? I'm that one. Guy, oh, Ariana Grande's old boyfriend. What was his name? The comedian. What was oh, Pete name? Davidson. Pete Davidson. Yes, yes. Okay. I don't know. I, I don't know who that is. We don't oh. get him over here in China. He's a no um, that's, fair. that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I'm gonna look him up though. Pete Davidson. Yeah. All right. Who uh, on the other side? Who do you think is the most underrated musical artist that you like? Musical artist. That could be could any kind of form of music. Could be like a singer, um, band, uh, rapper, whatever, hip hop artist, jazz musician, whatever. N nobody listens to Phil Collins anymore, so I would say him. I jam to Phil Collins all the time. Tarzan, I, Tarzan is my it. shit. I'm a, I'm a I drummer. Love Tarzan. So, okay, I just tell you a quick note. I know I'm diverting a little bit here, which you know I'm <laughs> old. It, it happens. Us old guys, we divert. We get off topic. Bill Collins is one of my heroes because not only is he a great songwriter and singer, but he's also a drummer and he, and he's actually, he's a drummer that plays left-handed, which is backwards. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a drummer that plays left-handed. So I've, I've got a lot of love for Phil Collins and that, that uh, actual drum fill that I just did from in the air tonight. Yeah. You're not going to be able to beat that. So good answer. <laughs> Very good answer. That's and, awesome. Expected answer. So, That's all awesome. right. Which leads me to this next question. Totally, totally great segue to <laughs> if you can come back in your next life as an animal, what would it be? A lion. Ooh. Urgh. My daughter would love that. <laughs> all right. Give me the first positive word that comes to mind when I mention this word COVID. Family. Good answer. A brand new movie seen on the big screen at a theater, or would you rather binge watch a series? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Um, Assume. Oh man, I'm binge watching. I'm yeah. have to do it. I'm binge watching. I'm liking this guy more and more. <laughs> All right. Oh, now, see, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a theater every time. I, lo I love yeah. the theaters. I love the theater. No, I'm a binge watcher, so I'm with you, Jaquan. Um, all the way. All the way, man. I mean, really, uh, a movie for two hours with strangers? Or I could be at home doing what I want and watch hours and hours of a great show. <laughs> hey, nothing will, nothing will ever compare to seeing Avengers Endgame in theaters with a full theater. Facts. Man, nothing will compare to that. <laughs> and I love binge-watching series, but some things are all about the experience. All about True the experience, that. like our experience today. I'm assuming you're you're a you know a young lad of you know twenty something. 
that you play a few video games, as as us old guys call it. You're a gamer. Yes. What what is your favorite game to play, or your favorite game ever? Ooh, that's a much harder question. My favorite game. Oh, ever. this. I like this. You're on a deserted island. You can only have if you, one. If game. you need to give a top three, give a top three. Okay, okay. All right. Damn the diff- Call of Duty Dude. Modern Warfare 2, Fortnite. Good choice. And Madden. Okay. Supplement, right. supplement, supplement. This is from my brother because I was kind of like throwing these questions together and I said to my brother, you got a good question for him? And he, and, and he said, when you play Madden – which team are you? That's a great question. Now, I don't have That's a, a favorite question. team, but when I did play Madden, I would say my favorite, and the only reason was because I loved to run with the quarterback. It was the Ravens. I was that guy. There it is. <laughs> I had to be that guy. I was running with Lamar down there every play, but I would say the Ravens right now. I love you on Baltimore, actually, but that's, you know, a side note. <laughs> just, just FYI, Jaquan, Tetris, Pong, yes, Pac-Man. Those mm-hmm. are my top, top three games. Like the Pac-Man. Anyway. Like the Pac-Man. <laughs> All right. If you could advertise one product, okay, so you become famous and uh, this company is going to come approach you to advertise a product. And you get your choice because you're rich. You're, you're, you're being drafted number one by, by everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, you're a lion. I mean, you're a lion. <laughs> <laughs> you're running with Lamar. I mean, this is, this is you're the man. Yeah, you right. can do whatever you want. And you can advertise one product. What would it be? Body armor. Nice. And number 10, the last question. Favorite thing to eat while watching... A Super Bowl game. When you're not on the strict diet. Yes. Chicken wings. Yeah. What kind of sauce? Yeah. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to go barbecue. All right. I'm going to keep spicy? it simple. I'm going to keep you it like simple. Spice? You like a little spice? Oh, uh, I'll go. I mean, if it's, let's just say it depends because if somebody orders a spicy, I'll eat it. But if we're keeping it simple, Barbie spicy. Just to, just so I won't mess up the order. I don't want to hear nobody. Oh, why'd you get it? <laughs> Keep it simple. Keep I'm it a mild simple. guy myself. Regular old buffalo. So I uh, I, I, I can I, respect yeah, that. I'm I'm learning a lot about my co-host tonight. But, um, <laughs> I'd say I'm learning are, more about you, man. I love you. Stiff arm middle yes. schoolers. Used to play don't rugby. Try. Don't judge. Not can't, can't forget about the uh, the left-handed drummer either. Left-handed there you drummer. Go. That there I did go. not know that. Yeah. Left-handed, yes. Um, we've learned a lot about you tonight. I mean, CPW. I'm getting it tattooed on my arm after the uh, <laughs> interview today. Um, I love I love when you said hurdle when the time is right. Yes, that to me. Maybe that might not be your favorite quote, but that was one of my favorite quotes that will resonate with me after this interview today. Hurdling when the time is right. It's all about opportunity and doing it when it's the right time. It's not doing it all the time because then people will get used to it. So it's doing it at the right time, picking your moments. And so I've learned a lot about you tonight. And you know what? It's going to make this so much more genuine and spectacular when we're going to get your name out there. I just want to do a little plug on my company, uh, Viridian Global. We've uh, designed some shirt for Jacon, draft Jacon. We're going to just draft you like there's no no tomorrow. I mean, the NFL yeah. needs to see you. <laughs> and if you want to support this wonderful cause to get this guy out there, he's a great guy. He's a great player. I mean, 1,500 yards in your final season. This guy's no joke. This guy is where it's at. And great having you on tonight. So we really appreciate it. I'm going to leave it with, um, with Michael at the end, but uh, I just want to say thank you very much. Honored to have you on here. And we're going to continue our relationship. We're going to follow you. We're going to yes, follow sir. you to your path to success because we know you're going to do it. 
So yeah. thank not you literally so because we're not creepy, but <laughs> yeah. from a safe yeah, distance, I'll keep that at in least mind. six I'll feet. Yes, yes, we're we're not creepy guys, you know. I'm I'm more of I'm more of a bulldozer, right? Because I'm straight arming uh, middle school students, so I'm 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 a little bit in your face, but uh, no, oh, excellent having you, excellent having you tonight, and um, your answers were great. You're a great guy, and we're just so happy to get you out there. You deserve it. You work hard. You're smart. You're articulate. Um, you're interesting. You're interested in so many different things. So thank you so much for having being on with us tonight. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mike, for all the opportunities you guys gave me. I, I love this uh, podcast. This was fun. Literally, this was fun. I liked it. I liked it. Hey, man. Well, you know, after you get settled in the NFL or anything, we'll have you back on. We'll talk about your first season and all that and Definitely. maybe uh, how your fantasy football team's going then. Say less. I'm going to shout you guys out and everything. I love it. Oh, I love to hear that. Yeah. Um. Well, it was, uh, you know, it was great having you on. It was great getting to know you. And I think, um, you know, I think the listeners of this podcast are going to become uh, big fans because you came off as a great guy, very genuine. And, um, you know, it just it, it goes to show that it well, it's not a facade. It is who you are and you're passionate. You really care about the game, but you care about so much more than that, too. And, um, you know, I think you're going to gain a lot of fans just from a. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, on behalf of of Mark, on behalf of Jaquan and the team at the Undrawn, say thank you for listening and draft Jaquan. <laughs> thank you guys. Draft Jaquan. <laughs>